focus on it, but the emotions, I mean, your grandfather passing, mm -hmm. you were, I guess you were down there. Yeah. So just, just talk about the emotions of, of his passing. Yeah, you know, it was it, it was a, an incredible man that, that did, did a lot in his life. Um, you know, he's a, he served in the Korean War. Uh, he got his doctorate from Alabama. Um, you know, he's a Hall of Fame baseball coach. So he, he really meant a lot to, to me. And, you know, he's kind of the, the cornerstone of, of our whole family. So losing him was tough. But, you know, I was able to, to go down and see him uh, while he was still alive on spring break, um, which was kind of left me at peace with, with the whole thing. So, you know, his legacy is going to live on through me. Now you come back and you jump right back mm -hmm. into this. Your, your first day out there today, do yeah. you feel like you just pick right back up? Uh, or first day of practice, always a little rusty? Yeah, on some things. Um, you know, I know I miss, miss some deep balls that, you know, I think later in the spring, uh, you know, I'm not going to miss. Just kind of getting getting back on the same page with, you know, having the wideouts run run routes against DBs and stuff, um, which is something that will, will just come with time. How has the off season been for you, and even to this point now? Because I guess where I'm going with that, you're getting on a lot of lists as one of the best quarterbacks in the country now. Mm -hmm. Whereas last year, you were fighting even to be yeah. the starter and having to prove people that you could even do it. So yeah. mentally, the perception of you is. A total 180. Yeah. How do you stay focused? How do you tune that out? And how is it different now when you have expectations? Yeah, I think just before, kind of surprising. Just keeping the main thing, the main thing. You know, last year I was, I was focused on helping this team win, um, and and this year that that's my main goal as well. You know, I have to get better. Last year was was an all right year. Um, you know, I I didn't perform at the level, you know, I thought I should have. Um, so that's what that's what this off season's kind of kind of been about is. You know, fi finding my weaknesses, uh, we found those early, uh, and then working, working these last two months to, to correct those. You mentioned accuracy. What does that entail for you this spring? A lot of it's just body position and consistency. Um, you know, I think we, we watched the cut-ups last year of, you know, all the, all the pass plays, and, you know, really the inconsistencies in my drop really showed up, uh, and that's what caused the, the inaccuracies. So I think just kind of, honestly, going back to fundamentals of, of basic drop mechanics and, you know, Timing the drops up to the to the routes. You guys, you guys won nine games last year, yet you didn't really get uh, Jaheim going till yep. you know the middle of the season. You had the early season injury. I mean, this team probably had more in it than than, than nine wins, didn't it? Yeah, I think I think we uh, we underachieved last year. Um, you know, I think I think that that, that team was was a ten eleven win team for sure. Um, and you know that's kind of that's kind of the next step that we have to take. Um, and you know it, it was easy to go from or not easy, but it's easier to go from five wins to nine wins. But now it's it's really damn hard to go from from nine to eleven um, nine to eleven wins. So that's kind of been been the focus of our off season, even starting with Coach Mike, is getting bigger, faster, stronger, um, and really really striving to take that next step. Is that accuracy improving on that? Is that your biggest focus, or are there other areas? Yeah, I think I think that's kind of the the, the main focus for for this spring for me is, is accuracy and you know it was only my first day and we we weren't in full pads so it's kind of kind of too early to tell uh, with that but you know all off season and throwing with the with the guys I felt felt really really good um, so hopefully I can just keep getting better at that. So what's a realistic completion percentage? Knowing that you do take shots. Yeah, I think I think. Um, you know, in in the season, um, you know, I want to be in the 70s. High 60s is is the bottom floor. Like 68 percent, it's 68 percent is the bottom floor for me. Um, I want to be up up there in the 70s. I'm assuming that's not just a number where you're throwing the ball, especially on those short routes, tight ends, backs, things like mm -hmm. that. Setting that up so they can quickly, you know transition to being a runner yeah. is that something that you go back look at film study figure out how to get those balls in better spot yeah I think uh, coach TA has has done a great job of kind of outlining the the points of emphasis the, this spring um, and that and that's one of them is is precision accuracy you know letting it letting it to where letting the ball take them to where they don't have to break stride and they can just run through balls um, and you know eight, eight to ten eight to ten yards um, you know on some of the deeper balls is is the difference between here and here so that's kind of been been a big big point of emphasis for us. Brown talked about the work you did in the offseason here, but he also talked about quarterback country work. What have they done for your game this offseason? Yeah, uh, quarterback country is ran by a guy named David Morris. Um, me and him have been working since 
since freshman year. Um, <clears throat> and this offseason, we kind of with Coach Brown, T.A., uh, Coach Morris, and myself, we kind of went, went all in on, you know, fo focusing on the fundamentals um, because he doesn't really teach – teach schematics or stuff he leaves that that to the coaches in the building but it's more so just just fundamentals and you know kind of going back to the basics of throwing yeah i think i think it kind of goes back to to when he first got here in the winter um he's kind of he's not really a really loud guy um you know he's kind of quiet and you know he kind of just puts his head down head down and works uh, but I've been really impressed with him so far, and I think he's gonna he's gonna do a lot to help us out this year. So with with Zach and Doug gone, you're kind of the old guy in yeah. the offense now. Is it a different feeling this year? Yeah, you know it, it's kind of weird uh, being the being the old guy in the building. Um, you know I'm, I'm probably one of the oldest ones, um, but you know it's. It, it, it's all about leadership, you know, j just because you're the oldest guy, you know, you still have, to, still have to show up and, you know, be that same guy every day. So age really doesn't doesn't factor in too much to that. you find yourself um, mentoring or just showing guys the ropes more now? Yeah, I think I think that that's a, a lot of a lot of the game. Um, you know, I had guys like JT and Daigie who really who really helped me out a ton on on preparation and kind of just knowing football. You know, we were different players, but you know, the basics of, you know, defensive game plans and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of been been what I've been doing this offseason with, with Nico and Sean is kind of kind of helping them out and anything that I learned the hard way, you know, kind of try to teach them the easy way. You mentioned Tyler Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, so your third position coach in three years. But yeah. What do you think, Tyler, hard to adjust to another new position coach? No, Tyler. Tyler's awesome. And, you know, even back at, back at Troy, he was – he, he was the guy that, that was showing me around. So our relationship goes goes way back. Uh, we're super comfortable working with each other, um, and you know it, it's it's been a great great new new addition to the room. In addition to accuracy, Coach Brown did talk a lot about last year that there were times you need to be smarter. Mm -hmm. Was was a term that he used. Yeah. What does that mean to you, and how are you trying to work on being quote unquote smarter this year? Yeah, like I think I think you can go back to I think it was our first drive against uh, Cincinnati. It was one of the first drives, um, and you know I forced the ball to the left to to Preston Fox, where you know the kind of what I've been studying and stuff is you know checking the ball down to Jaheim, letting him go, and then and then you know kicking the field goal after that because I think it was third and third and seventeen or something. It was a long shot third down but not really forcing forcing the deep ball but just take, taking what the defense gives you and checking the ball down and then getting away with points. Would you take us back to you, your relationship with Neil goes back to when you were 11 years old or something like that? Four, 14, 15, something like that, yeah. Uh, you know, what that has meant to you and what, what he's, what he's you know, how you guys have developed? Yeah, I think I think our relationship is special. Um, you know, I'm super super comfortable with him. Um, you know, he's he's he has a great relationship with with my whole family, which is huge for me. Yeah, he, he offered me I think sophomore year after the season. So I don't know how many years that is. I'm aging myself, but um, but yeah, no, we we have a great relationship, and I think that that allows us to to work well together. Football put out that video yesterday mm -hmm. of you on Twitter, and I saw that you retweeted and stuff. But the fan base seem to be really behind that, and mm -hmm. you know they're rooting for you and that sort of thing. How does that feel for you? Yeah, it feels good. You know, that's the special special thing about this state um, and this university is that you know you really have 1.8 behind you, uh, and and that, that's what I fell in love with as a junior in high school, um, and you know I'm I'm still in love with it today. Noticed a shorter hair. Any significance to the haircut there? Yeah, my mom. <laughs> my mom. She, she she lets me go lets me go wild child for the. Uh, for the, for the season, but you know when it's time to time to be professional and get back to get back to work, she she, she makes me cut it. So it's coming back though. If anybody's worried, it's coming back. What do you think the cylinder of this uh, team is this year? I was give everyone back healthy and overall getting some key transfer pickups. Like, what do you think the cylinder is? Yeah, I, I think it's still it still is the offensive line. You know, why Milam's the best left tackle in the country. Um, Tomas is is going to be one of the best left guards in the country. Brandon Yates played a ton of football. You know, he's an unbelievable center. Um, Jaquay Hubbard's played a lot of football. Um, yeah, and, you know, Nick Malone is, Nick, Nick Malone is, you know, th this is his dream, you know, Morgantown kid playing for, playing for the university. So it, it still, still all starts with the, with the boys up front. You know, if, if we can't run the ball, if they can't pass protect, you know, all the weapons that we have in the backfield or, or out wide really don't mean anything. 
you had great success throwing the ball deep uh, mm -hmm. last year. What is the secret behind, you know, throwing yeah. explosive pass plays? Yeah, I think I think the you know it all starts with like I said with the guys up front. You know they. If they they keep me clean, um, you know that that gives me the ability to to push the ball downfield. Um, and then I think our wide receivers, as the year went on, did did an unbelievable job of making contested catches down, downfield um, and really separating from the DB that you know the the, the throws could could hit. What do, you, what do you see when you're looking out there? I mean, you're you're looking at the field and you know you know that you're gonna go deep. But mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of it's just like you just look at different field zones. Um, you know, if if there's someone there, then then you kind of work, work down the ladder. Um, you know, but but every, every play is kind of kind of independent on on what, what I'm looking at. You see any dead spring training game? Or he was in Arizona. Yeah, know, yeah, he's, he's out so there. Probably didn't. Or no. Did no, um, because sp spring break I was down. I was down in Miami um, w with my grandfather. So I watched. I think I think their Cubs game was televised. So I watched that. Um, but I'm super excited for them. They they, op they have opening day, I think tomorrow the next day against the Mets, which, which will be cool. Uh, I'm super super proud of him. You know he's kind of paid his dues, and I'm glad he's finally finally gotten to the big leagues. You look at their schedule. Will you be able to get there at some point this summer? So yeah. So that that's kind of been. That's kind of been what what we've been working through is kind of figuring out when when the long weekends are going to be and you know when I can just after workouts Friday fly out ca catch a weekend series and then fly back Sunday um, because you know ba baseball is my first love so you know it's always going to hold a special special spot in my heart. Yeah, Pittsburgh too now. Yeah, Pittsburgh's a given though because I, I want to go to Wrigley. Um, I think that's a bucket list, and then I want to go to to see the Green Monster in Boston. Possible for you to do both, but given the injuries of baseball, did that thought ever pop through your head? Hey, man, I could pop over there and take a few cuts. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're gonna have to ask ask Coach Brown about that one. Um, that's above my pay grade. So, still, I mean, with baseball being your first love, though. Oh yeah, no, I mean, I I wish I could, but you know, I'm a quarterback, so that that's, that's what I continue to plan on doing. Yeah, so let's see. I saw him. I saw him once in. I saw him once in January, once in February, and then I spent a couple of days on on spring break down with him. Um, but me, me and him are talk, talking um, all the time. Like I'll send him send him clips from practice, and you know we'll, we'll hop on a call and kind of talk through some things. So I'll probably see him probably see him three or four more times uh, before the season gets going, which which is always nice. Yeah, so they, they've been really great about communicating with him. Um, it kind of they, they've kind of put it put it on David that you know wh whatever he wants to teach um, and whatever he, he he knows I should do. Um, there, there he's he's relaying that back up to to Coach Brown and TA and stuff that that you know the the coaching points that he he gives down in Mobile, you know, are are transferred up here. Uh, I, mean, I think they're, they're they're just about about getting better. Like it doesn't matter how many yards I throw for in in spring ball. I think just getting better every day is is kind of the point of emphasis. Like we're really not thinking about Penn State right now, you know, because that's 157 days away. You know, we're just focusing focusing on you know today's Wednesday practice and then. I, I meant more about results in terms of completing passes. Oh, yeah. for you personally. Yeah, that's that's kind of yeah. that's kind of the the emphasis is you know just. Just upping upping my completion percentage that you know it'll translate well in the game. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you.